Brother Muhammad says, Alhamdulillah, Allah the Almighty has given me enough wealth that I can afford a kind of lavish or grand wedding. But I want to keep my nikah as simple as possible because the nikah, that is the marriage, of the Prophet was very simple, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Will I be a miser for not doing a grand wedding or I should go with the sunnah? Also suggest me on how should be a Muslim's nikah. When it comes to extravagance, when it's, it comes to excessiveness in expenditure, there is no one size that fits all. It depends on the income of the individual. It depends on the environment, the circumstances, the community, the time and place. So there are a number of factors that govern such issues. <clears throat> Generally speaking, Allah Azza wa Jal says, eat, drink, but do not go into excessive expenditure. Wala tusrifu. Don't waste money in a sense. Don't be extravagant. So Allah is telling us to eat and drink, but to be moderate. Allah also described the believers that when they spend, their expenditure is not extravagant, nor it's misery. Rather, it is in between. To have a big wedding, <clears throat> this is dependent on a number of factors whether your income allows it or not, whether you are calling righteous people or only people of influence and wealth. You remember so many times we've repeated this hadith, the Prophet said, the worst, said that the worst food is the food of walima. Walima is for the, usually given for the marriage contract. The worst food is the food of walima. Because those who reject it are invited to it. The wealthy, the people of power and fame, usually they reject coming to such feasts and meals. And those who would accept and answer it are not invited. And these are the poor, uh, these are the people who uh, do not have as much influence as the uh, prior ones. So this depends on also your income. If a person is going to borrow, if a person is going to take a chunk of, what not, uh, what, what, of what's not his or not be able to provide the obligatory expenditure to his family in order to pay for such a wedding. This is extravagance. However, one cannot say, Akhi, you have to be at the rock bottom when you make such weddings, in the sense that you have to pay the utmost minimum, the least minimum uh, possible uh, in terms of the wedding hall, in terms of the food, in terms of uh, means of hospitality. This is not logical. Allah says in the Quran, say, who made what Allah Azza wa Jal, what Allah Azza wa Jal has given us, who made it haram while Allah made it lawful and good? Man harrama zinat Allah allati akhraja li ibadihi min al-tayibati wa al-rizq. Who is it who Allah, what Allah has given us from the adornment of this life comes and says, no, this is haram. No, this is, as long as it's halal, it's earned by halal, it's spent in halal, and there's no extravagance, there's no problem in that. However, what we see nowadays is clear extravagance. Hotels that people pay 100,000 sad rials or 150,000, uh, uh, etc., maybe it's something within the ranges of $30,000 for one night, 
and for food, which would eventually in two, three hours turn into what you know and be flushed down the toilet. And you pay this much? No, this is extravagance. We don't say erect a tent and call people to come and eat dates and water. No, but be moderate. Don't do something that may break the heart of the poor. Don't do something that may get you an evil eye. Wow, look at this. Where did they get this money from? Do something that is moderate, nice, presentable, and utilize the money for the welfare of the newlywed couple so that they would begin a better life. What is a suggestion to uh, uh, a Muslim uh, nikah? It should be as stated earlier, it should be simple. The way of the Prophet ﷺ, the way of the companions, it was simple. A good meal, a place to gather in, and maybe it's different times, correct, but still you have to have this moderation uh, in mind, inshaAllah.